Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G and it's Tuesday, April 18th. Elon Musk is getting the last laugh at his ultra-ambitious predictions about the Tesla Model Y. Elon Musk draws a fair amount of criticism for his predictions, particularly with full self-driving cars, but in this case he hit the nail on the head. Back in 2016, the CEO estimated the demand for the Model Y to be between 500,000 and 100,000 units per year. This was four years before it actually came out. Musk went so far as to predict that the Model Y would become the best-selling car globally. Fast forward to last year, when Tesla announced that the electric SUV was on track to catch up to the Toyota Corolla, which was around 1,150,000 units per year. And now... With the last straw approaching the camel's back, we are getting ready to make the call. Early numbers for the first quarter of 2023 indicate that the Model Y is still growing in reach with early registration data. On top of that, data coming from China and Europe indicate that the Model Y took the top spot. At Electrek, we're left feeling vindicated that electric cars are going to become the best-selling car in the world. And it's no surprise that Tesla leads the way. Tesla announced that it is making a new version of the Model 3 with a long-range battery pack and a single rear-wheel drive motor. Unfortunately, it's only available for businesses in the United Kingdom, at least for now. The new exclusive trim essentially combines the long-range battery with the single-motor drivetrain, enabling a WLTP range of 394 miles. There also is a price increase of about 4,000 pounds over the base model. As much as that sounds like a great addition to the permanent lineup across the world, our friends across the pond are the first to see it in action. It might be because there is a strong incentive for electric vehicles to be purchased through businesses in the UK, including a company car tax being capped at 2% rather than the regular 20 to 37%, depending on the vehicle. Tesla is expecting its Powerwall to become an even bigger difference maker for homeowners with solar in California following a net metering change. California changed its net metering rules starting just this week. The new net billing tariff, as it's called, it's also sometimes referred to as NEM 3.0, is now the new solar billing policy, and it basically results in removing the model of getting credited for sending energy back to the grid at the import price. Instead, now solar power system owners are getting credit for sending energy into the grid at the value of the avoided cost of the utility, which is actually similar to the wholesale cost of large power plants. This results in a significant drop in value of the energy an individual can send back to the grid, depending on the time of day and also time of the year. Tesla is now informing these customers that the value of their Powerwall battery is now higher, as they can now tailor when to sell energy back to make the most money. Polestar has unveiled its upcoming Polestar 4, a small SUV that the company is calling an SUV coupe. One of the more interesting features is the total lack of a rear window. Instead, Polestar is using a rear camera. The cameras aren't particularly new, but in this case, without the option for a window, definitely draws attention. The new Polestar 4 will be Polestar's fastest car yet, capable of a 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. In the single motor configuration, you lose about half that power with a 0 to 60 time of 7.4 seconds, but you do get access to 300 miles worth of range and the 102 kilowatt hour battery. All versions have a maximum 200 kilowatt DC and 22 kilowatt AC charge rate and a bi directional vehicle to load capability. Contrary to the name of the car, which is called 4, the size is in between the two pre existing models. It's 2 to 3 inches shorter in each dimension than the Polestar 3, and 2 to 3 inches taller and wider than the Polestar 2, as well as being 10 inches longer. Thus far, Polestar has built its cars on platforms shared with Volvo, though the Polestar 4 diverts from this and is built on the SEA architecture from Geely. <music> Nissan and Toyota are also showing off some electric vehicles, although they are Concept cars, shown at the same Shanghai Auto Show as the Polestar 4. First from Toyota is the BZ Sport crossover concept. The electric crossover will be co-developed by Toyota and BYD's EV technology company. BYD will most likely provide the model's battery, electric motor, and electric control systems. Toyota is also showing the BZ Flex Space concept as a larger vehicle which is co-developed 
with Toyota, of course, and Guangzhou Automotive Group. Moving into Nissan, their vehicle, called the Arizona, is said to use Nissan's own electric platform and be made as an SUV. I'm going to guess that the Arizona will likely make it to Europe and American markets at some point, only because Nissan doesn't have a lot of time to waste. Nissan has planned to release 19 new electric vehicles by 2030, up from the previously planned 15. And let us not forget Xpeng Motors, who pulled the sheet off of what they call an ultra-smart coupe SUV, which is called the G6, at least for the Chinese market. The Xpeng G6 arrives as the first production model from Xpeng to sit upon their next-generation SEPA 2.0 platform architecture, enabling it to offer many new design and performance features, including a huge range increase. According to Xpeng, the vehicle's 800-volt silicon carbide platform, combined with 3C battery technology, can deliver up to 755 kilometers or 469 miles of range. It can also charge up to 186 miles in 10 minutes of charging, which is pretty amazing. While the vehicle is planned in some iteration for other markets, the name G6 will be only for use in the Chinese market. And I think we know why. In today's community comment found on YouTube, some of you like the idea of the charge arm shown yesterday while expressing some concerns over the practicality. Myself, I'm a little skeptical, mostly because municipalities are rolling out the red carpet for electric cars in many cases, and I'm going to guess that having a post next to the curb instead of next to the property would, you know, like a parking meter, that would solve a lot of this instantly, and there's already precedent for it. The unfriendly local governments, such as my hometown of Salt Lake City, I don't really expect a whole lot from them, and I certainly would not expect them to agree to having someone install a huge crane in front of their house to charge up a car. Now, true, the device would certainly be targets of vandalism, but to me that's not too much of a concern because I think that any charging system would be a victim for vandalism. Maybe wireless charging built into the pavement, that would be really tough to tamper with. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.